Well, it finally happened. We finally know when we'll be getting something concrete on Grand Theft Auto 6, though in an announcement of an announcement, but honestly, after all this time, I am more than happy with this. I had started a short series earlier this year with the intention to go through the history of GTA 6 rumors up until the release date, but I think now, a month away from getting our first official look at the game, is a great time to go and have a fun little look at the past decade of speculation and rumor about the next Grand Theft Auto. I won't go through absolutely everything because there's just way too much, but I'm going to try and go through as much of the most relevant, interesting, or just ridiculous and funny things that I can find from each year since the release of GTA 5 in 2013. Obviously, there wasn't really any serious talk of GTA 6 in 2013 since the game released in September. But just a month later, the Rockstar president gave an interview to Develop Magazine that ended up serving as the main basis for any and all GTA 6 rumors for the first couple years. Towards the end of the interview, after talking about the history of the company and the production of GTA 5, the interviewer asks, When will Benzies, the Housers, and Garbit reform to talk GTA 6? Is there even a GTA 6 yet? And Benzies replied with, We've got about 45 years worth of ideas we want to do. We don't know what GTA 6 will be, but we've got some ideas. GTA Online is the focus right now. There ain't no rest between finishing 5 and then online. Plus we have some other things, stuff, DLC, I don't know how to describe it exactly, that we'd like to do, and we'll pick the right ones. Now it seems as though this was the most cited source for any and all GTA 6 rumors for the first few months after release. One quote that certainly kept people's attention for a while was when Benz mentioned how they had 45 years worth of ideas, which many took to mean that GTA titles would continue to be churned out, as they had been for a decade and a half before that. So the first batch of articles and speculation seemed to be largely fueled by that interview, and either based on it or, more likely, nothing at all. But the first real rumors began to swirl that a release date was planned in the summer of 2014. As reported by the Christian Times in July of 2014, quote, Fuse Joplin reported that the launch for GTA 6 will most likely be in June 2017 for Windows PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 versions. Rumors say it will be called Return to Vice City. Rockstar has not confirmed any of these rumors yet. However, in an update about the possible release date for Grand Theft Auto 6, a Rockstar employee denied the rumor. According to K-Drama Stars, the Rockstar employee took to Reddit and debunked the rumor that June 2017 will be the release date for GTA 6. The Rockstar employee further added that Rockstar is working on a different game right now. None of that should be particularly surprising, they are just trying to get clicks after all, but I find it funny that they bring up a completely baseless rumor, as though it were fact, only to tell you three sentences later that no, actually that information has already been discredited. Then again, it isn't unheard of for companies to deny what they're working on, even when they're actually working on it, until they're ready to properly announce it. Given what we do know happened though, it seems highly unlikely that this was ever true. Moving on to 2015, according to the page as it looks today, this article was from January of 2017. But if Google is to be believed, it was actually first published in January of 2015, just a little over a year after GTA 5's release. And while it doesn't exactly cover rumors per se, it does get into some of the speculation for what GTA 6's setting would be. Among the cities speculated are London, Paris, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Seattle, Las Vegas, even though we already know there is an existing Las Vegas parody with Las Venturas. And then, most curiously, Portland, Oregon. Now, this article wasn't trying to be anything more than speculation, but I find it infinitely curious that there was ever an expectation from anyone that GTA would visit somewhere like Paris, or even more unlikely from where I'm standing, Dubai, in the UAE, which was mentioned by a different article that this one seems to have yoinked the idea from. By the time GTA 5 came out, the Grand Theft Auto franchise was 15 years old. We already saw them reinvent their own wheel twice, once when jumping into the 3D era, and once when changing eras with the release of GTA 4. Both times, we stayed in essentially the same places we'd been seeing since literally the very first Grand Theft Auto, back in 1997. 
Now, granted, we did get three new cities of what was originally one city in GTA 1 with San Andreas' take on LA, San Francisco, and Las Vegas, Los Santos, San Fierro, and Las Venturas, but beyond those, and I suppose anywhere city from GTA 2, we had been stuck in the same three locations since the very start. West Coast US, East Coast US, or Florida. From April 21st of 2015, at first glance, this article seems to once again be referencing only the 2013 interview at Develop Magazine, but it goes on to mention speculation that would become quite common. Namely, the rumor that GTA 6 would feature a recreation of the entire United States, aka Project America. The article itself never uses the term, but we would eventually find out that there was indeed a time when this idea was at least strongly considered for GTA 6 and it may very well have been initially the plan in the early stages of development. Where exactly Tweaktown first heard this rumor though, I'm not entirely sure. Quote, It looks like Rockstar is reportedly mapping the entirety of the United States for its next GTA game, something that will push the release of GTA 6 to 2020. Ubisoft did something similar with the crew, which took the entire United States and shoved it into a smaller map, which took around one and a half hours to drive across. The bigger issues of having the entire US mapped for GTA 6 would be playing in it. Loading the entirety of the USA would have its issues. I mean, driving from one city to another could be a real chore, especially if it's just filled with countryside and nothing much to do in between. Second, the hardware requirements would be out of this world, even with the best coding that Rockstar could manage. Now, from what we would eventually learn in the 2022 leak, this seems to line up quite nicely. Many reports seem to indicate that Rockstar did indeed want to try and release GTA 6 sometime around 2020, but it got pushed back for various reasons. And while it may have been the first time that I've found a mention of the Project America idea for GTA 6, it most certainly wouldn't be the last. This article from July of 2015, just a few months later, also mentions the rumor that GTA 6 will feature a complete recreation of the United States. Perhaps something like Ubisoft's The Crew, which had been the first game to seemingly pull off this feat in 2014, just one year after the release of GTA V, albeit using a whole lot of cheats and shortcuts. Quote, It's already been confirmed that GTA VI is in development, and will be bigger than GTA V, but is it really possible to map America entirely? The GTA VI release date is rumored to lie somewhere in 2020, giving Rockstar over five years to create the next entry in the Grand Theft Auto series. If the rumors of the game being set across the US are true, then five years wouldn't be that much time for the Rockstar team to recreate the entire US. Again, the article does not directly mention where it gets its sources, but I have a feeling it's already been confirmed that GTA 6 is in development comes once again from the 2013 interview that Leslie Benzies gave to Develop Magazine, and nothing more. The first article to mention the 2020 window for release is apparently this one from N4BB, but it doesn't seem like they actually started the rumor, just reported on it, so I'm not exactly sure where this one actually got started. Then I came across an article with a provocative and sensationalist headline, which means you know it's definitely reputable. Grand Theft Auto 6 News, Ryan Gosling or Eva Mendez to voice GTA 6 protagonist. But don't get too excited. I mean, this was nearly 10 years ago, and I'm sorry to say, I don't think the reported protagonists, Jason and Lucia, are going to be played by these two actors, but I suppose we won't know until the game comes out. Quote, GTA 6 is expected to launch any time between 2018 and 2020, but most probably not any sooner than that. In addition, the Rockstar team plans to incorporate the whole US map into the next GTA edition, making it the biggest map created so far if this happens. For the protagonist of the game, it was initially believed that Ryan Gosling would lend his voice to the game. However, in an interview with Rockstar's Dan Hauser for The Guardian, it was implied that GTA fans could be seeing a female protagonist for this time around, believed to be voiced by Eva Mendez. There was also this very similar article from earlier that same month, December of 2015. This one from Express also mentions the possibility of Eva Mendez or Ryan Gosling portraying the protagonist, but most interestingly, it gives us a screenshot. A screenshot that we know is almost certainly completely fake and fan-made, but served as a source of intense speculation for years, with the concept of all three major cities connected in one massive landmass. Quote, Rockstar are yet to comment on the rumors, but lead developer Leslie Benzies previously confirmed that his team will be first working on a map before adding in storylines and missions. Moving on to 2016, the first article I could find of note was from Game Rant, but actually doesn't have all that much to do with GTA 6 speculation, but instead reminds people that during the development of GTA 3, 
People at Rockstar consider things like GTA in Tokyo or even Bogota, with them having even filed trademarks for both of those, and Grand Theft Auto Sin City, whatever that would have been. They ultimately bring it back around to GTA 6 here. Quote, Tech Radar sources let it slip that Grand Theft Auto 6 is currently in the preliminary stages of development. As of now, though, Rockstar Games has yet to officially determine the site for the next sequel in its wildly popular action-adventure series. Considering the fact that it's been nearly three years since Grand Theft Auto V's release, it's not an outlandish notion for Rockstar to begin drying up the blueprints for yet another entry in the series. Nevertheless, fans shouldn't expect to hear concrete details about GTA 6 anytime soon, especially since publisher Take-Two Interactive has said it's not interested in rushing development. In another report from The Independent, also in March of 2016, quote, Grand Theft Auto 6 is on its way, according to a report. Developers Rockstar have begun on the follow-up to GTA 5, which was released in 2013, and is by many measures the most successful and expensive game in history, according to a report from Tech Radar. The company hasn't yet settled on a location, and it isn't exactly clear when the new game will be released. It might not be released for some years yet. GTA 5 came five years after its predecessor. Then, in April of 2016, word begins to leak about the, at the time thought to be president of Rockstar Games, Leslie Benzies, who was, as it turns out, on sabbatical since the end of 2014, and was now suing his former employers, Rockstar Games, and their publisher, Take-Two Interactive. The details about Benzies parting are certainly interesting, but we won't get into it fully here, but this is definitely a turning point in the production of GTA 6, though exactly when Benzies would have stopped actively contributing work to the project, which was reportedly started sometime in 2014, the year he left, is unknown. This information became public in early April, though, and in its wake came a number of articles speculating on the future of the company without Benzies at the helm as well as the ever-growing nature of a little something called Grand Theft Auto Online. This is an article I could swear I actually remember reading back in 2016 from Forbes, but this one focuses less on direct speculation as to the location or plot of the next game, and instead focuses on the changing nature of the project, due to the ever-growing success of GTA Online. Quote, It's hard to understate just how ridiculous of a success Grand Theft Auto V has been for Rockstar. There's been the obvious tally, the 60-plus million copies of the game sold, but what's been unexpectedly impressive is how Rockstar bred a perfect golden goose in the form of GTA Online. It continues, Initially, the mode seemed like an afterthought. People show up for the new GTA games for the crazy single-player campaigns full of colorful characters and pulse-pounding missions. The online mode, with custom characters and random race battle events, seemed like it could be a neat addition, but no one could have predicted what it has mutated into. See, they even knew it back then, but they couldn't themselves have possibly predicted how it would mutate even further ten years down the line. The article goes on to talk about how after the unexpected runaway success of online, plans for the game's single-player DLC fell through, or so the rumors went though by now we basically have confirmation that that's how it went down. Quote, I mean, when you look at those GTA Online numbers, the mystery is solved. Why bother scripting new story missions, recording new dialogue, and selling $15 to $20 worth of DLC when you are bringing in millions just sprinkling in new items to GTA Online every so often, and players line up to shell out money for the in-game currency? The success of GTA Online means that a true sequel, GTA 6, can essentially be delayed indefinitely. Ouch. Now, that hits home pretty hard right about now. With GTA 5, we are now seeing Rockstar make a clear choice to ignore story content in favor of the online mode. Instead of playing as a set character like Trevor or Nico or Tommy Versetti, players would create their own hero like they did in GTA Online. Sure, there would be missions and maybe some cutscenes and such, but the sort of microtransactions that make GTA Online so profitable would be inserted into the game from the start. Well, at the very least, it doesn't sound like that's what we'll be getting, but I suppose we still really don't know. All of the leaks and rumors since the big leak seem to point to the game still being a single-player experience first, but I think we all know there will be a GTA Online 2 or something to that effect. It remains to be seen if it will be actively worked into the single-player experience, but I would like to hope that it won't be. Then again, with the state of the modern games industry and what Rockstar themselves kind of did with the GTA Online protagonist being woven into the story, of single-player, sort of, who knows? But it sounds like we will be getting the two protagonist dynamic we've been expecting, so it seems more than likely that the online component will once again be somewhat separated from the single-player campaign, but 
that's also what I hope for. If Rockstar can develop a big new sprawling map and fill it with activities and missions and heists, then that may be all they think they need, given how well GTA Online has been received. If they insert just enough story components to satisfy that aspect of their player base, they will now have the ability to convert those players into microtransaction purchasers, in a way they may not have been able to do before with how separate GTA 5 and GTA Online were. Yeah, see, now that is a scary thought. We still really don't know what Rockstar is going to do about GTA Online. It seems unlikely that it will simply continue as is and update into the new engine. No, too much has changed for something like that. Whatever GTA Online 2 is, it's going to have to be a new foundation, but if it were up to me, it would be significantly less important than it was in GTA 5. That isn't going to happen though, I think we all know that. Some, perhaps technically positive speculation on my part is that maybe now at the very least, Rockstar knows that their online component will be successful beyond measure from the get-go. So, I don't know, maybe that means they'll be able to actually prioritize single player and multiplayer separately, instead of, say, promising us DLC that we never end up getting. I don't know, I'm trying to find a silver lining to this depressing thought. In August of 2016, anticipation for something big and new from Rockstar got more intense, when a fiscal report indicated that work was being done on some exciting future projects, which many hoped would be GTA 6. But as it turned out, what that report was talking about wasn't GTA 6, but Red Dead 2, as the first rumors about that began to surface around this time. This article from September of 2016 in the Christian Times talks about how there were rumors that Rockstar would make an appearance at Sony's showcase that month, but they were dashed when they didn't show up and continued to be completely silent on the potential production of the game. I couldn't really find many speculative articles in 2017, at least not interesting ones, but in July of that year, actor or model Tim Neff made headlines on Digital Spy, IGN India, and Insider when he listed himself apparently doing motion capture work for both Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 6, both of which were clearly bullshit. I still haven't played through all of Red Dead 2, but I am pretty damn sure this guy was not in it, and will not be in the next GTA, but I find it funny nonetheless that the guy even attempted this, and it served to once again fuel speculation that development was underway, which as far as we know now, it most definitely was, though exactly what it looked like at this stage is anybody's guess. But while 2017 was a dry year, it seems, for GTA 6 rumors, 2018 was when things started to really heat up. Since now, it was five years since the release of GTA 5, the same amount of time that passed between GTA 4 and 5, and still nothing official had been announced or even hinted at. For context, Rockstar had teased Grand Theft Auto 5 as early as 2011, only three years after the release of Grand Theft Auto 4, but we were now coming up on a full five years of nothing but rumors and speculation. From an article in the Mirror UK from March of that year, quote, The most recent rumor seems to add weight to the idea that Rockstar will revisit Vice City from the PS2 days for the next outing of its crime saga. According to the YouTube channel The No, it will allegedly be set in Vice City with a new female protagonist. They say it is codenamed Project Americas and will be based in Miami or possibly a facsimile of Miami. Sadly, it also appears the game won't be here until the early 2020s. At this point, it seemed like the general consensus was it was more than likely that we would see a female protagonist as our default and only protagonist in the next game, and since that was something that one of the Hauser brothers had at least entertained in interviews before, it wasn't entirely without basis. In the summer of 2018, a GTA Online modder apparently made enough people believe their phony GTA 6 ad presented in Online that several articles were written on IGN, Polygon, and Digital Spy. I was around in GTA Online back then, but I don't remember anything, so I have no idea how widespread it was. If you remember seeing this supposed modder ad in GTA Online, let me know in the comments below. This article, published in October of 2018 on Comic Book Gaming, is actually one of my favorites. It talks about an interview that Dan Hauser did with GQ that month about the release of Red Dead 2. In it, Hauser is quoted as saying, It's really unclear what we would even do with GTA 6, let alone how upset people would get with whatever we did. Both intense liberal progression and intense conservatism are both very militant and very angry. It is scary, but it's also strange, and yet both of them seem occasionally to veer towards the absurd. It's hard to satirize for those reasons. Some of the stuff you see is straightforwardly beyond satire. It would be out of date within two minutes. Everything is changing so fast. Yeah, it certainly is, Dan. You can say that again. 
The article went on to further crush hopes that GTA 6 could be announced anytime soon, especially with the recent release of Red Dead 2. They said about GTA 5 that, Considering that the game is still performing admirably well, again nearly 100 million copies sold, there's no rush to get a new game out there. In April of 2019, the resume of a former Rockstar employee, Bib and Michael, made headlines when he credited himself as having designed some of the vehicle models from real life for GTA 5 and online, as well as the upcoming GTA 6, which all but confirmed what many people already suspected, that yes, GTA 6 was in development, but given the continued silence, it was probably not coming anytime soon. But then, on June 29th, 2019, a Reddit user posted a leak of supposed details surrounding GTA 6. The post itself has since been deleted, but plenty of articles were made about it, allowing us to get an idea of what exactly it supposedly leaked. Thanks to the power of the Wayback Machine, though, we can still get a look at exactly what this post originally claimed, so let's go through it. I have two friends who are very reliable and have worked for places such as Kotaku and PC Gamer. They relayed this information to me. I also have a very dear friend who works for Rockstar. He won't confirm the details, but he won't deny them either. Normally, if something is not true, he'll flat out deny, but here he just laughed and said, You know I can't talk about that stuff, bro. So, I think we're gold, boys. The next GTA title has been in development since 2012, one year before GTA 5 launched. Production didn't actually pick up properly until mid-2015. Even then it was on ice while the teams focused on RDR2. This sounds almost true. Most of the information we now have points to development starting just after the release of 5. But it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for the work to begin before the next game is even finished. Especially with a company as big as Rockstar and a franchise as big as Grand Theft Auto. It's another Rockstar Worldwide production, not just one or two studios, but all. This, as far as we know, is true. Codename is Project Americas, set in both Vice City and a new fictional location based on Rio de Janeiro, with some linear missions taking place in Liberty City, not open world, think Ludendorff in GTA 5. Also, been recently hearing about Cuba, but I ain't sure. Again, a lot of this does actually seem to still line up pretty well with the actual leaks we've gotten since then, though not perfectly. Nowhere else have I seen a mention of a fictional Rio de Janeiro, but it wouldn't be too far outside the scope of the Florida plus tropical areas further south that we're expecting to get now. The existence of Cuba in the game world, or a smaller island meant to play a similar role, also seems to be something most leaks are pointing to now in 2023. Game will balance realism and arcade won't be as realistic as RDR2. One playable protagonist this time, male, not female, despite supposed leaks. This is the first bit that is either completely wrong or was changed between the time of this leak and the actual one in September of 22. We know for a fact that there are now two protagonists. Most sources seem to point to them being named Jason and Lucia, but it's definitely possible that at one point they intended to stick with a more expected path of having one male playable character. Said in the 1970s and 1980s, you play as an up-and-coming drug lord wannabe named Ricardo. Another key character called Casey is part of the narrative. You start off as a grunt doing runs as a cocaine smuggler from Vice City to the new large South American area before making connections with big-time drug lords and making your way up. Multiple cities. There will also be a giant prison which will play a part in the game. This just sounds made up and is what convinces me that this post was indeed complete bullshit and mostly guesswork. Some of it is good guesswork, but a lot of what they say here was already widely speculated. As far as I know, having the next GTA game take place in anything other than modern times, the year it releases, was never on the table, and hasn't been since at least the 3D era. GTA 4 and 5 were both set the year they came out, and set the trend of the HD era being a parody of modern times, whenever that was for each title. I have never heard anything substantial to convince me that this idea was actually ever seriously considered will feature a chapter system similar to a Tarantino flick or Red Dead Redemption 2. Weather is a heavy focus, hurricanes, floods, etc. Both of these sound likely too. Buildings change over the eras, vehicles too. This causes headaches apparently, but they manage to nail a pipeline and get it working. So older, rare classic cars get more expensive as time progresses, etc. Full economy, next level. Well, like I said, I don't think we'll be getting a story set in the 70s and 80s. The main setting will certainly be in the modern era as we've seen from the leaks, however, I suppose it is still possible they could do flashbacks. Given the amount of headaches that would add though, I'm not sure how likely that is. Heavily inspired by Netflix's Narcos. 
This also seems likely to be at least somewhat true. Narcos has easily been one of the more influential shows like that since GTA 5 came out, and it would match up with the Florida locale, but this isn't a super hard guess to make. They wanted to have an incredible 70s, 80s soundtrack, but Jury is still out on that one. Again, who knows? Probably to an extent this will be true since every GTA has been known for having an extensive library of licensed music, both old and new. I expect we will get one or maybe more classic Vice City stations with 80s power ballads and whatnot, but once again, this seems like a no-brainer, not some big revelation. A younger Martin Madrazo will make an appearance, as well as his father, who is a big drug lord at the time. You do some missions for the Madrazo family involving hits and other gangs. Now, this I find pretty interesting, and also pretty likely. GTA has always been fond of reusing and expanding on characters, but there wasn't a lot of that in GTA 5. The only characters to really come back from GTA 4 were Packy McCreary as a potentially missable heist crew member, Johnny Klebitz, who wasn't around for a very long time, and then Nico, who wasn't actually in the game at all, but simply mentioned. There was a, an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but nah, he went quiet. Beyond that, you have some minor characters like Rocco Pelosi, Marnie Allen, or Ashley Butler, but none of them served an integral role in the story. It seems pretty logical that we run into some Madrazos in Florida, but if it is modern times, it seems far less likely that it would actually be Martin. Perhaps Martin or the Madrazos would only be name-dropped and not make much of or any actual physical appearance, but who knows? What characters from GTA 5 do you think we'll see in 6? Drug Empire building is a mechanic similar to Vice City Stories, but bigger. Much bigger. Think the GTA Online system and dial it up to 10. There you have it. This sounds awesome and honestly also pretty likely. Having recently finally played Mafia 3 and the old Godfather games and the Scarface video game, I've always wanted GTA to take a proper stab at the empire building business it flirted with back in Vice City, San Andreas, and 5, but with a much grander scale. We get something akin to that in GTA Online, but there are a number of things that make it less than ideal in terms of gameplay. This idea does once again seem fairly likely. The thought that Rockstar would take lessons learned from GTA Online specifically, and apply them not only to the next iteration of Online, but also the next single player campaign, seems pretty likely to me. I don't know how good it will be, but honestly, I'm optimistic. As long as whatever system existed in the single player game didn't have direct ties to the Online version, needing to be online all the time, microtransactions, things like that, I think without all that it could actually be kind of fun. You can only have weapons on your person, no arsenal in your back pocket, think RDR2 and Max Payne 3. Your personal vehicle, similar to GTA 5 and you can now change it, will be like your horse saddle in RDR2. All your equipment is stored in the trunk. Similar to LA Noir, you can also store your body armor in the car. If you wear it, it appears, no longer just an invisible thing. Again, given the route the series was headed, this seems possible, but not altogether likely, I'm not sure. Red Dead Redemption 2 did very well, at least as a single player game, and it had a much stronger emphasis on realism. The leaks we saw last year seem to indicate that the new game is indeed built off a newer version of the Red Dead engine with things like a new interaction system, and there is apparently also going to be an inventory system, so I think both of these might actually be true. There will be tons of subtitle reading. Think Max Payne 3 amounts, because the characters speak the language they're native to, very immersive, like watching an episode of Narcos. Whenever you're in South America, don't expect to hear much English. Vice City, however, is a mix of everything, mostly English though. Again, seems likely, and I'm fine with that. I love that kind of stuff. Last bit of narrative info, it will discuss topics such as HIV and the immigrant crisis of the time, a fictional version of Fidel Castro, etc. Next gen only, not PS4, Xbox One. Game is now their primary focus, alongside another title, which I believe to be Bully 2. Game is still in pre-alpha, so names, locations, details could and probably will change. No ETA on a release date. Well, that last bit about the HIV and immigrant crisis stuff might be true, but I sincerely doubt we'll get a GTA version of Fidel Castro, considering the real Castro has now been dead since 2008, when GTA 4 came out, and the game probably still isn't coming out for another one or two years. As far as not being on PS4 and Xbox One, well, yeah, that seems to be a given at this point, but the mention of a second project the leader believes to be Bully 2 might actually have been the GTA remasters, if this post has any roots in the actual truth. Honestly, I'm a bit iffy on this. Plenty of what they say does seem to line up with what we know now, and the things they say could probably all be chalked up to the game changing dramatically over time, which is almost certainly what happened, but I don't know, what do you think? Was this post complete BS? Forbes, PC Gamer, and Tweaktown all had articles at the time swearing up and down the leaks weren't true, but hindsight is a fascinating thing. Let me know in the comments, I'm curious what y'all think. Tweaktown had another article though, published on Christmas of 2019, which now claimed, 
We have news that Grand Theft Auto 6 will launch in Fall 2021, apparently coming from Twitter user PSE Rebu. It's unclear if this was ever true, but given that we now know that development of the game probably restarted from scratch at least once, it's certainly possible that Rockstar were originally aiming for this window. And then, 2020 happened. For some odd reason, people seem to all of a sudden have a lot more time on their hands for speculating on GTA 6. Actually, even before the pandemic, 2020 started off strong as a year of hope for GTA fans. Outlets like Express reported on Rockstar's own announcement following the holiday season of 2020 that both Red Dead Redemption and GTA Online had been seeing record-breaking success. They went on to drool at the slightest suggestion that an announcement of any kind related to GTA 6 could be coming, all from this. Expect more big updates and a few surprises as we move forward into the year. Which shows just how desperate people were starting to get for the slightest bit of official information. And then, things started to look a little bleak. On February 4th, 2020, word began to break that Dan Hauser, the co-founder of Rockstar Games, had been on an extended break since 2019, much like Leslie Benzies had been and that as of March of 2020, he would no longer be working for the company. The loss of Benzies had been a devastating blow to many of the GTA Old Guard who grew up with games designed in large part by the Benz, the Hauser brothers, Laszlo, and Aaron Garbett, among many others. And now, Dan was gone too. This news also came just before the release of Take-Two's financial projections, which seemed to indicate that there was no big project currently planned for release or announcement any time that year. But that would not stop people from continuing to speculate throughout the year as the release of GTA V got further and further away. In fact, this article from Game Rant seemed to take the report from Take-Two positively, because while it did not indicate that any releases or official announcements were imminent, speaking on the future of the company, the Take-Two CEO did say, Fans can expect multiple releases from the company's most significant franchises, which was likely pointing to the eventual release of GTA VI as well as probably the definitive editions, but they couldn't have known how far away they still were. This article from The Gamer, published in April of 2020, talks about the controversy that, by then, had plenty of headlines surrounding the intense crunch culture over at Rockstar. Many people believe that this, at least in part, was the reason why Dan Hauser, and maybe even the Benz, left the company. But the article mentions that the recent reporting from the company actually suggested their next title could be moderately sized, and be continually updated over time in order to avoid the problems of crunch faced in the past. It isn't clear if this is actually referring to GTA 6, or maybe even the definitive editions, but it would also make sense given the amount of time we've been waiting. Gamers these days are in a lot of ways ignorant, willingly or otherwise, of just how much insane work is being squeezed out of developers on the ground actually making these massive companies as games, and thus get a little bit more impatient than they perhaps should. In October of 2018, Dan Hauser had been quoted as saying in order to finish Red Dead 2, he and other employees were often working 100 hour weeks or more and various public emails had surfaced since then attempting to address the company's many issues, especially as it pertained to crunch and overworking. Both of these, and a lot of articles in early 2020, were based off of this Kotaku piece on Red Dead 2 published on April 15th. It's mostly about the company and what it did to try and address the crunch associated with Red Dead 2, but it also had a section which specifically seemed related to the next Grand Theft Auto. Quote, One belief shared by Rockstar employees is that Dan Hauser's departure will lead to fewer last-minute rewrites and overhauls, the type that led to a great deal of overtime on Red Dead 2. One plan that management has laid out for the next game, a new entry in the Grand Theft Auto series, is to start out with a moderately sized release, which by Rockstar standards would still be a large game, that is then expanded with regular updates over time, which may help mitigate stress and crunch. So this seems to make things a bit clearer. The moderately sized plan for GTA 6 does seem like it will still be possible, but as Kotaku mentions, a moderately sized game by Rockstar standards will still likely be a massive release. However, given the ever-growing trend of honestly mostly big AAA studios releasing games 80% finished and then slowly patching them up to 100% has become so mainstream that I would actually be shocked if Rockstar didn't go that route, so I guess we'll see. In May of 2020, some GTA Online players got excited when discovering some doors at the Los Santos airport marked 2013, 2014, and 2021. 2013 was obviously the year GTA 5 came out, 2014 probably the year that GTA Online came out, but what was 2021? Looking at it now, it seems more than likely that it was actually teasing the Definitive Editions, if it was even a tease to begin with, but given this isn't the first time that 2021 came up, it is possible this was the original window that Rockstar hoped to announce or release something GTA 6 related. 
This article from Screen Rant isn't actually all that relevant, I just agree with Solid Snake that it should have been set in Toronto. Really, we Canadians are just desperate for an open world game set here. Make it happen. No further comments. But here's an article that actually starts to line up with the truth. In late May, Notebook Check reported on Take-Two filing a 10K form with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. According to the 10K, Take-Two, Rockstar's parent company, will substantially increase its marketing budget in fiscal year 2024. At 89.2 million U.S. dollars, the fiscal year 2024 budget is over seven times as high as Take-Two's committed budget for fiscal year 2021. It's also over twice as high as the committed budget for any fiscal year in the five-year period between fiscal year 2021 and fiscal year 2025. This lines up perfectly. Rockstar is about to drop a trailer in early December 2023 and then spend the next year or two advertising the ever-loving crap out of the game and hyping it up. Further credence was added to the Vice City setting rumor when in August an 80s retro synth project Vector Hold briefly tweeted, GTA 6 will most likely take place in Vice City. Music rights people have been hitting up synthwave artists for a radio station. And even though it was quickly deleted, on the internet nothing ever really goes away. And soon articles were being published fueling the speculative fire that the game would indeed be set in Vice City. By this point, that setting seemed to solidify and few rumors speculating on other locations were given much credence, with the growing evidence that the game would visit the last location left to be visited from Rockstar's original Big Three, New York, Los Angeles, and Miami. Also in August of 2020, a Reddit post on gaming leaks and rumors said that Take-Two had registered the domain name GTA Vice City Online, but if you look up the domain now, it's still available, which isn't a surprise since that is a bit of a clunky URL anyway. They also apparently registered GTA6.com, but that one too is also not apparently registered by anyone connected to Take-Two or Rockstar, as far as I could tell. But also in August, a third devastating blow was delivered when fans learned that alongside Leslie Benzies and now Dan Hauser, longtime producer and writer for the series, as well as the heart behind many of the game's radio stations, Laszlo Jones, also left the company to pursue other projects. The loss of the Benz and a Hauser brother was enough. But with Laszlo also leaving the company, many of the fans who grew up with the series began to seriously worry. There was no doubt plenty of talent out there. Better writers than Dan Hauser, better DJs than Laszlo, and better project leads than Leslie Benzies, but finding them would be a whole different story. Not to mention, these people had been integral to the franchise for so long that even if it was possible to replace them, it would almost certainly change the series forever. This likely would have been true even if only one of them had left, but with all three of them gone, the future of the series was now in new hands and it was anybody's guess where it would go next. A teaser for GTA Online content in November of 2020 also sent people down a rabbit hole, when apparently the video contained GPS coordinates, which when plugged into Google led to a dirt road in Virginia which vaguely looked like the Roman numerals VI. Things were getting desperate. It probably only made things worse when the DLC turned out to be Cayo Perico, a tropical Vice City-like setting. An article from January of 2021 discusses a patent filed in October of 2020 by two Rockstar employees, David Hind and Simon Parr, the technical director and lead AI programmer respectively at the company. As for the patent itself, it describes a new system for non-player navigation and would make the movements of computer characters more realistic. Chances are you've seen a character walking in place while stuck on the corner of a bench or something. This system would not only prevent that, but also define specific characteristics for each non-player character. For example, they would drive at different speeds depending on what vehicle they're in, the type of road they're on, or the weather, which sounds almost tailor-made for something like a GTA. This is pretty interesting, and sounds like it would indeed be related to GTA, especially given the titles of the employees who filed the patent. Then comes perhaps the most interesting leak before... The BIG ONE! ...in September of 22. When a post on the internet's most infamous anonymous message board kicked up some dust. This one is very interesting for a number of reasons, but I want to go through the whole thing and then I'll give my comments on it after. I won't give my identity and I will not share any details that could in any way identify who I am. I also won't reply and I do not care if you believe me. You'll find out how right I am much sooner than you think as the newswire art is already finished and ready. I've worked in a coordinating capacity with Rockstar for quite some time now, but in the end I'm a gamer and I'm most loyal to you all. Watching these supposed leaks lately has just been sad. It's always been something I found funny, but the last copyright strike one just made me sad for you all. So I figured, why not give you all a nice little bit to chew on for a while? Here are some high points for you. First of all, you have literally been told what GTA 6 slash online would be. He said it in interviews, but you just won't believe him. What else do you think we've been doing for a decade? 
The work has never stopped on GTA. Not even when Red Dead Redemption 2 Crunch was wild. We always had at least a small team constantly working on bringing over assets. That's because we knew it had to exceed every expectation or you would all burn us. He goes on in a second post. You will see a fully realized Project America, if that's what you want to call it. There will be a total of five contiguous cities across five states. Most of this was already built, but needed to be brought over into new engines. We've had to ask artists on several occasions to remove mention of this work from their professional profiles. You all picked up on only a few of these. Somehow, though, you all missed the point. There is a sixth city in another location that I won't spoil for you. The rest of the five should be obvious. The current map is included in this new world, expanded and enhanced, and kind of plugs into the new map with the use of empty space in between. We got really good at that recently. It'll make more sense when you see it. Though one of my favorite places on the 5 map goes away when this happens, and sadly there's just no way around it. We test new assets and mechanics constantly in GTA Online. I genuinely don't know how you all aren't seeing it. Recently we tested our ability to add to the current map. It wasn't quite as successful as we hoped, and we did have to push dates back somewhat. Though we are confident the new hardware can handle it. We have never stopped building in Liberty. You wouldn't believe how good it looks. I think it and the Northern Pass areas are the best looking parts of the game so far. Still a ton of lighting and shading to be done, but these two areas really show off what the new Rage Engine can do. Parts of the leaks have been correct. You guys are putting together the pieces, but are greatly underestimating how all of these things work together. Take-Two won't settle for anything less than a platform where GTA Online can live on indefinitely. We get to tell stories within that space. Get ready. So right off the bat, this guy lays out that he does not care if people believe him and just generally comes off very arrogant. You'll find out how right I am much sooner than you think as the newswire art is already finished and ready. Seems to have already been proven wrong, unless this guy's idea of sooner than we think was 11 months later, which was when we finally got confirmation of GTA 6's development. No newswire banner to speak of. The guy goes on to be pretty obnoxious and unprofessional, but then again, any leaks on any project like this would be, by their very definition, unprofessional. The guy just comes off as more of a channer cosplaying as a Rockstar employee than an actual employee, though. The idea that part of, or most of, what's caused the long development time is due to this Project America idea being more real than we thought is an enticing one. But once again, going off the actual leaks we eventually got, it seems unlikely that they were able to hide the evidence of five other cities actively in development in such a massive data dump. What, the thief only got to the Vice City folder? Seems unlikely. He also claims that they are constantly testing new assets and mechanics in GTA Online, which sounds like it should be true, but I don't know. I don't keep up with GTA Online regularly because I value my mental health more than that, but I don't seem to recall the introduction of a lot of new mechanics over the last decade. Some, sure, but not an overwhelming amount, and definitely not many that screamed GTA 6. The thing that's most convincing about this post is the last bit. Take-Two won't settle for anything less than a platform where GTA Online can live on indefinitely. We can tell stories within that space. Now that sounds like it's going to be true regardless of whatever GTA 6 ends up actually looking like. Apparently though, industry insider Tom Henderson on Twitter said the leaks and most other Project America claims were untrue. This Screen Rant article from April of 2021 talks about an apparent website that fueled speculation around that time, which may or may not have been simply related to GTA Online, or an update. It was a dead page that apparently just read 62005, but I can't find any actual footage of it, and it doesn't seem like the mystery, if there ever even was one, was ever solved. In May of 21, a number of photos leaked, according to Comic Book, the first two originally leaked in 2020, with a third coming later, but now a fourth image had shown up, and supposedly, connecting them all together would give you the GTA 6 world map. These ones I'm sure lots of us remember, and the leaks begin to get a lot more elaborate as we go on, often featuring artwork of the supposed map. These images seem pretty fake to me. They've got all the hallmarks of a fake leak. They're all blurry and very, very hard to decipher, but that could just be because they're images from an incomplete game. It's hard to say for sure. I'd say they're bullshit, though. An article days later from Guru3D claimed that GQ Magazine spoke with Rockstar, and they commented specifically on the rumors that there would be much less of a focus on the single-player element in favor of whatever GTA Online 2 was. I couldn't actually find anything from GQ at the time, though, other than this one article in GQ France, but it's from September of 21, so this can't be what they're referring to. In order to not leave doubt in the players, another developer of the company, Tariq Hamad, was asked if we will continue to see a story mode in the next Grand Theft Auto, to which he responded, absolutely. To be fair, though, that doesn't actually answer the question of what the focus will be. It simply confirms that there will be a single-player mode, and I don't think anybody was actually expecting that there just wouldn't be a single-player at all, so... Then E3 2021 came and went without any show from Rockstar, which apparently people expected, but little did they know that Rockstar did indeed have something planned for 2021. Something GTA-related, in fact, but not GTA 6, and 
Though there had been rumors about this or something like this for some time, in October of 21, Rockstar dropped a trailer on their YouTube channel and, well... The fiasco that is the GTA Definitive Editions is a whole other video for another day, but unsurprisingly, from its grotesque birth also came a number of rumors that the games featured easter eggs for the actual next Rockstar Games project, which everyone knew would have to be GTA 6. In the original GTA 3, there is a sign on the western side of Staunton Island looking out towards the airport, which read, See you in Miami. This was, back then, pretty obviously a tease for GTA Vice City, which released the following year. So naturally, when the GTA Definitive Editions released, fans immediately flocked to that same sign in GTA 3 to see if it had been changed at all, and well, it had. It now read, See you soon, but showed images from Los Santos, but fans still took this to be a teaser for the next game. And then people found a series of pictures inside the Lil Pro bin in San Andreas. All of them showed flying saucers flying over various locations in Rockstar Games, as games, but one of them could not be identified. So people began to assume that it was a house in Vice City from GTA 6, and were later validated, apparently, when finding a very similar looking house in the real world Boca Raton, Florida. And then, finally, in February of 2022, out of absolutely nowhere, as far as fans were concerned, Rockstar tweeted this. Many of you have been asking about a new entry in the Grand Theft Auto series. With every new project, our goal is always to significantly move beyond what we've previously delivered. We're pleased to confirm that active development for the next entry in the series is underway. And the entire internet lost their collective shit. After nearly nine straight years of silence, Rockstar had finally, actually acknowledged that it existed. I mean, even if all of the leaks were untrue, we all knew it was being worked on, but this was big. This was huge. This was them actually saying it was real. And boy were people excited. Not long after the official announcement, a rumor about Eminem being on the game's soundtrack, among others, surfaced. Matthias Victor BR on Twitter claimed the following songs will be in the game. Domino Dancing by Pet Shop Boys, Odessa by Caribou, Disparate Youth by Santa Gold, and Numb by Rihanna featuring Eminem. All of which certainly seem... plausible. Less plausible was a claim in March by games analyst Michael Patcher that brought things back to the whole Project America idea. He said, GTA 6 will have multiple cities for players to explore, with gameplay that could last up to 500 hours. Patcher, who serves as a managing director of equity research at Wedbush Securities, believes development of GTA 6 began in earnest between 2014 and 2015, and expects the game will feature several real and fictional locations, including Vice City, Liberty City, San Andreas, and London along with other overseas destinations. Because of this massive scale and the complications that it brings, the leaker believes the game could offer somewhere between 400 and 500 hours of gameplay. Rockstar hasn't commented on the statements, and many fans have already called them into question, citing previous mistaken claims from Patcher as a reason for their disbelief. And then Rockstar dropped something else GTA-related that wasn't the defective editions and wasn't GTA 6. They... <sighs> they released GTA 5 for the third time. Understandably, many fans at this point began to truly worry about the future of the franchise since it seemed like Rockstar was intent on milking GTA V for every last penny it was possibly worth, and there were still plenty of pennies to milk. In May, an image hit Reddit supposedly taken from a Take-Two Interactive financial presentation, which laid out the company's plans for the next few years. It claimed that a Mafia Primordial would be launching in 2023, which, well, they better get on that then. A Red Dead mobile game, Red Dead Gunslinger, was launching in Spring 2023, which, Nope, and that GTA 6 was launching in 2024. Given that the first two are almost certainly bullshit, and definitely bullshit, I wouldn't put too much weight on this specifically. Even people at the time didn't seem to believe it. In June, a new rumor surfaced surrounding the possibility of a male and female protagonist claiming they would be siblings, quote, A report by X-Fire, citing Rockstar Games insider Matthias Victor BR, this potential leak reiterates some information mentioned in previous leaks about the game. It claims that Grand Theft Auto 6 will have two protagonists, a male and a female, and they will be siblings. This new leak adds that a drug cartel killed the protagonist's parents and caused them to be separated, with the brother growing up to work for the GTA 6 equivalent of the DEA, and the sister becoming a prominent member of the cartel. A few days later, Twitter user GTA 6 News and Leaks posted images of a supposed trailer video on Rockstar's YouTube channel that was privatized, but it apparently showed the game's ESRB rating, which, for anybody who knows much about game releases, would definitely not appear on the game unless they'd already been seen by the ratings board, and that usually only happens right before a game comes out, or is ready to come out. 
A tweet by Watcher Guru in July claimed GTA 6 leaks suggest the story will take place in Colombia slash Miami and will include in-game cryptocurrency rewards for players to earn and trade. Well, given that crypto has very much already fallen out of the public consciousness, I hope and pray that this is complete bullshit. But in July, Bloomberg published an article which talked about Rockstar Games reportedly attempting to clean itself up and modernize as the culture around it changed, and a whole lot of gamers TM collectively proved their efforts necessary. I couldn't actually get access to the Bloomberg article without paying, but both the Huffington Post and Forbes reported on it as well, so... Since I can't see that Bloomberg article, I don't know what its sources were, but apparently it claimed, among many other things, that GTA 6 would indeed feature two playable protagonists, one male and one female. But instead of being siblings, they would be a couple, with the main story being a sort of modern Bonnie and Clyde tale. In August, leaker Matthias Victor BR made claims about the potential map size for the game, claiming, The GTA 6 map will be as big as Red Dead Redemption 2's map, with the Caribbean islands included, but not part of the open world. But then, also in August, we got our second official confirmation during a Take-Two earnings call, when CEO Strauss Zelnick said, With the development of the next entry in the GTA series well underway, the Rockstar Games team is determined to once again set creative benchmarks for the series, our industry, and for all entertainment, just as the label has done with every one of their frontline releases. And then, out of nowhere, in September 2022, a teenage hacker leaked around 100 gigabytes of data on GTA 6 on a public domain, one of the single biggest hacks in the history of video games. On September 18th, 2022, a user on GTA forums, one of the most popular message boards related to the Grand Theft Auto franchise, posted about 90 video clips and screenshots, as well as a ton of code and assets related to GTA 6. And all of a sudden, we didn't just have footage of the game, we had a lot. Now, this video is about the evolving nature of rumors surrounding GTA 6, but it isn't about the actual big leak itself. I personally went out of my way to see as little of the footage as possible, and I obviously won't be showing any of it here. A lot was learned from the leaks, though, about the game's development, including the game was indeed set to be primarily in Vice City. And that there were two protagonists who were also named Jason and Lucia, though I don't think the names were ever actually confirmed in the leaks or otherwise. It really can't be understated how massive a deal this leak was. It will pretty easily go down as one of the most infamous video game industry hacks of the last 30 years, or probably all time. But the actual details of how it happened are a story for another video, and one I recommend you look into if you don't know what actually happened. It's pretty fascinating. Basically, some 17-year-old kid in the UK associated with the hacker group Lapis was responsible, and even the FBI ended up getting involved, but the last anybody ever heard of him, he was in a youth detention center. The leak itself provided a ton of information about the game, but it had also come with very little explanation or context, since it wasn't leaked by an employee. And so we really don't know exactly what we were looking at or what it represented in terms of the larger picture. We knew it was a very early build of the game, an alpha build to be specific, and the graphical similarity to Grand Theft Auto V at first upset a lot of people with little knowledge of game development. Gradually though, people started to sift through and analyze it, but again, this isn't about the actual details in that leak. Leaks in the gaming industry, or any similar industry for that matter, always end up doing the most damage to the mental health of the developers actually making that game. Just don't be that person. So understandably, following the leaks, the company was kind of forced to take stock and evaluate the damage, but the CEO of Take-Two pretty soon afterwards reassured people that they would not allow it to affect their plans for release, which gave fans at least some reassurance, since rumors were abound that it would further delay the already 10-year-old title. Also understandably, there wasn't really any other leaks discussed, at least for a few months, following the big one, but eventually, everything goes back to normal as we arrive in current year 2023, and the rumor mill starts back up again in full. In February, thanks to the leaks, we got a potential look at the full world map showing Vice City, two other big cities to the north and west, one of which was reportedly based on Fort Myers, Florida, and a smaller one to the west, and the Florida Keys, but it wasn't entirely clear if this map was actually real. It seems almost certain that this was a fan mock-up based on the leaks. Then in March, the rapper 50 Cent posted a picture of Vice City on Twitter, saying he would explain the post later and people eventually started to speculate that it could be related to some GTA movie or TV show when the rapper claimed whatever it was would be Bigger Than Power, the name of his show on the network's stars. And then in May, Take-Two released a financial earnings report which also featured projections for fiscal year 2024 and 2025. Quote, Looking ahead, fiscal 2025 is a highly anticipated year for our company. For the last several years, we have been preparing our business to release an incredibly robust pipeline of projects, that we believe will take our company to even greater levels of success. 
In fiscal 2025, we expect to enter this new era by launching several groundbreaking titles that we believe will set new standards in our industry and enable us to achieve over $8 billion in net bookings and over $1 billion in adjusted unrestricted operating cash flow. We expect to sustain this momentum by delivering even higher levels of operating results in fiscal 2026 and beyond. So fiscal year 2025 begins in April of 2024 for context, don't ask. And pretty much everybody knew at this point that there was only one thing that Rockstar or practically any game company could release and expect to make over $8 billion from, and that was the next Grand Theft Auto. This was practically the final confirmation that people needed that the game would be announced more formally very soon, and while we would still have to wait, we wouldn't have to wait very long. There were only a few more noteworthy rumors spreading around as the year went on, including one that Joe Rogan would be featured in the game, according to reports from AudioVisor that the game would incorporate episodes of his podcast into the game world. And then in October, the French publication Rockstar Mag reported on rumors about the new Rage engine powering GTA 6, which would apparently feature significant improvements to the passage of time, rendering quality, and artificial intelligence. But then, finally, finally, we got a window. Not quite a date, but a window for the release date of the first official GTA 6 trailer, the first week of December 2023, to coincide with the 25th anniversary of Rockstar Games as a company. And that brings us to, well, now. I obviously didn't cover literally everything from the last 10 years because there was simply an insane amount to go over, and only so much of it was noteworthy or interesting. I'm sure I still left out some wilder or more interesting or fascinating rumors, so if you have any more, share them down in the comments below. All the articles and other sources used in researching this video can be found in the description, but I'd like to personally thank my wonderful patrons who support me directly. If you want to get early access to my videos, the chance to request your own videos, hundreds of original music tracks made for my channel, and a direct link to me, sign up at patreon.com forward slash Guinness Walker. That's Guinness with one N. Well, we're almost there, but it feels like we finally made it. The beginning of December 2023 is going to be crazy. And depending on what we learn from the trailer, my job might just be kicking into overdrive sooner than I thought. If you're new to the channel and are a fan of GTA, try checking out my GTA lore series, GTA Biographies, as there is no better way to learn the full story of the GTA universe as you prepare for the release of Grand Theft Auto 6. I'm Guinness Walker, the criminal historian, and I'm very grateful you made it this far into the video. I hope you're as excited as I am for the future of this franchise, and I hope you'll stick around as I have a whole lot more to show you. Have a wonderful evening, and thank you so much for watching. This video is brought to you by my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. By supporting the channel for less than $2 American a month, you can get early access to videos, the ability to download episodes, and nearly 100 original music tracks. A very special thank you to my executive producer tier patrons, Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Aussie, Die Castinator, Chuck K45, Miles Garrett, and King GTA 15. All of you are amazing, and your support is something I can't fully express my gratitude for. Thank you all so much. And this episode is brought to you in part by my executive producers, Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Chuck K45, and Die Castinator. You can check out Ezra's YouTube channel, Scott Games 99 where they play games such as NHL and MLB, and story-based games like the Red Dead Redemption series, with plenty more story-based games to come. Mason Collins' podcast channel, We're About Everything, where they discuss, well, everything, from zombie apocalypses to game remasters and more. Chuck K45's channel, who's working on setting up a channel all about buying farm equipment, fixing it up, and starting a new farm from scratch, and Die Castinator's channel, where they examine, review, and discuss all things Diecast, from the history of the hobby to rare models and much more, with new videos basically every day, in addition to buying, selling, and trading the Diecast cars. All links in the description down below. Thank you to all of my patrons, and please consider signing up if you enjoy my content. Every little bit helps, people. Even if you can't support me financially, though, support the show by showing my executive producers some love.